There's literally no secret to being good at rope except being a little bit obsessive about your practice. So practicing things over and over again and drilling things over and over again. In this class, I'll be teaching you the main basic knots and skills that you need to get started in rope. In fact, for bedroom bondage, we want everything to be really simple and really basic. So this will definitely give you all the tools to have a bunch of fun there. I'll be showing you how to do the single column tie. So the single column tie is essentially your starting anchor point so that you have something uh, that you can manipulate the body with and then also a point where you can then move the rope around your partner's body or your own body. So the reason why this is called a single column tie is because we're tying one circle or one loop around one column, one body part. Using this kind of technique, you will end up with either one of two knots. You'll either end up tying what we call a granny knot, or you'll end up tying what we call a reef knot or a square knot. The bite and the working end are sticking out uh, perpendicular to my cuff. This tells me that I am in the presence of a granny knot. So if I tie like my knot like this, my rope wants to go down here. So it might be really good in situations where I want a kind of 90 degree angle to the rope. So for example, if I was tying an ankle to a bedpost somewhere over there. So I know that if I twist in this direction, I'm getting a granny knot. So in order to get the reef knot, I'll need to do the loop in the other direction. Okay, so now the working end is facing you and not me. And then the rest is the same. Why would you want to use one versus the other? Some of them can just be aesthetics or basically personal preference, or it might be because you have a really deep understanding of the mechanics of one of the knots and that's the one you end up preferring to use. Now that we know how to tie the single column tie, let's look at the double column tie. So the rules for the double column tie are when you're tying two columns or two body parts that don't touch. And the other situation where double column tie is really useful is when you're tying two columns of different sizes. So for example, if you're tying a wrist, which is very small, to, for example, your thigh, which is quite big. I'm gonna preempt how much rope I need. I think about this much should be fine. And I'm gonna go between the hand, yeah, there we go, and the foot and then through here. So I've really captured the rope at the back and then I'm gonna give it a nice little tug. Try not to pinch your partners. Cool, and do your little twist here. Have a very, very tiny bite. Very, very small bite. How does that feel? It feels good. It feels yeah. good, okay, good, <laughs> cool. The double column tie is really practical for play because you can very quickly bind two limbs together and also tie something off to a bedpost or a piece of furniture. So really, really great for bedroom bondage. You can do this on the other side. So you'll basically end up with this kind of position. And you can imagine if you take this and you pull it off to a bedpost and then this one off to the other bedpost or to a piece of furniture, you have a really nice versatile position for play. Eventually, you won't even have to think about it and you'll be able to tie a single column tie with your eyes closed behind you upside down. <laughs> Did you find that helpful? Then if you enjoyed that, you can log on to Shibari Study and log on to my course where I teach this in depth and I'm going to give you all of the little hand tricks and all the little rope tricks that you need to make your practice really smooth. <laughs>